well now. Father Neil, how about something exotic? Like a hot cup of coffee. Thank you very much, Father. The cream's extra. Black will be fine. Right, let me cure it a black coffee and one with cream for me. <laughs> oh, I think, uh, I think Father Neil might appreciate a bowl of strawberries. It's very kind of you, Father. Without cream. Strawberries for you too, Father. Oh, for me? No, no, no. I thought you liked them. Oh, I do. Oh, I do indeed. But the price has risen so alarmingly that it's far too expensive for the both of us to be eating them. <laughs> More wine, Father Neil. Oh, just a little, please. Just a little, says you. For your stomach's sake. You have stayed in now. Nellie would think you were a Methodist preacher. <laughs> hey, oh, oh. Over there. The Mrs. Flanagan. Catholics, I presume. What? They go to Mass oftener than Jesus himself. <laughs> Miss Flanagan? Miss Flanagan? Miss Flanagan? Miss Flanagan? Strawberries for one. Coffee coming up, gentlemen. Thank you, Kylie and Um, I was thinking, Father. That's very daring of you, Father Neil. <laughs> you know the Mikes in our church? Well, there's Mike O'Connell and Mike O'Reilly and, uh, Mike <laughs> No, no, no. The microphone mics. Oh, oh, yes, yes. I think you need a new loudspeaker system. The one you've got gives off a terrible hum. Oh, uh, and you need new confessionals. Nellie. What did you lace the strawberries with? <laughs> have not the old confessional boxes served St. Jude's well for the past 40 years? Well, have they not? Well, considering the sanctity of the sacrament, I, I think the faithful have a right to secrecy. What do you mean, a right to secrecy? Well, someone, um, who shall remain nameless, was walking past your confessional when they heard one of your penitents confessing. That's not possible. You couldn't possibly Mrs. hear anything. Mrs. Conroy. Through. What about Mrs. Conroy? The butcher's wife, Mrs. Conroy. Uh-huh. And the undertaker. Mr. Bottesford. Well, rumour has it that there's something going on between Mrs. Conroy and the undertaker. Well, it is news to me. There was something going on between them. You'd have to say that, wouldn't you, to safeguard the seal of confession? Good morning, fathers. Oh, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, yeah, uh, a, a minute. Would you come down uh, just for a minute? Father Boyd, this is Mr. Bottesford, the undertaker. Thank <laughs> you. And Mr. Conroy? How do you do? Mrs. Conroy's husband. <laughs> and the best sausage maker in the business. Are you liking the parish, Father? It's more interesting than I could possibly tell you, Mr. Conroy. <laughs> you haven't put any custom my way yet, Father. Here's my card. My motto, go to the Lord with Botter's Ford. <laughs> a 10% reduction for deceased Catholics, of course. <laughs> well, we're just in for a, for a quick jar, Fathers. Oh, well, we'll not detain you, then. Good morning to you. See you soon. <laughs> Seem good pals. Oh, the best, yes. They're both in the meat trade, you see, so to speak. <laughs> I'll have to tell Mrs. Pring that they're good pals. I mean, I knew it was she. Um, is Mr. Bottesford married, Father? Yes, yes, he is. But his two children left home long ago, and his wife ran off with a commercial traveller. So there's a lot to be thankful for. <laughs> now we'll motor back to the church and experiment, shall we? Uh, were you by any chance intending to eat that strawberry? Um, I don't think so, Father. Right. <laughs> Good afternoon, Father. Miss Flanagan, Miss Flanagan. I'll see you on Sunday. Yes, it is, Father. An astonishing man, Churchill, Father Neil. Yes, Father. He had sufficient brains to lick the horn, but not enough to become a Catholic. <laughs> Time for the news, Father Neil. <clears throat> My dear brother in Christ. It is right what you say, Father Neil. What, Father? I can't hear. It sounds as mixed up as a woman's motives are an Irish stew and no mistake. <laughs> <laughs> now, I... I want you to go into my box and confess your sins. I promise I'll keep anything that you confess under the seal. 
And don't forget to admit that you got to fall them strawberries. There's millions of people dying of starvation in India. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's 20 years since my last confession. And these are my sins. I stole the sweet rations off the children at the orphanage. Oh, oh and I uh, forgot to wash my feet last month. And I committed adultery. Adultery! <laughs> It's Flanagan. It's Flanagan. It's Flanagan. Your sins are a deal more entertaining than your sermons. Would you mind hearing our confession, Father Duddleswell? Delighted, Miss Flanagan. God forgive me for being such a hypocrite. <laughs> I can't have you hovering around me confessional. These two old dears might have been at the Elderberry Wine again. <laughs> if I'm not home by supper time, Bring me nose back in here. <laughs> well, the olive oil will help loosen the wax that's blocking your ears, Father Neil. I'm afraid I let you down, Mrs P. He tricked me into telling him who warned me about, um... What, Buttersford and Mrs Conroy? Yes. You did actually hear yourself what Mrs Conroy said. No. No? No. Uh, Mrs Davis, my friend who's an assistant in Woolworths, told me. <laughs> She was walking past Father D's confessional and she accidentally overheard it. Oh, Lord, so it was only a rumour. A few minutes ago we saw the butcher and the undertaker having a pint together. Never! Oh, just you wait till I see that huzzy Mrs Davis again. Yes, well, it would be kind of you if you put her right about poor Mrs Conroy. You know, I went to confession to Father D <laughs> just once. So did I. But that was very brave of you, Mrs P. Oh, not really. I told him exactly what I thought of him. <laughs> you know, it's the only time he's ever forgiven me. <laughs> now, don't forget your convert is coming this afternoon for her first instruction. What's she like? Mrs Rawlings. Oh, she's um, married to the baker. Wilson Cradle Catholic. They've twin boys aged eight. Any idea why she wants to become a Catholic? Now, strictly between you and me, I think she wants to become Pope. <laughs> Father Neil, oh, oh, if it isn't Joan of Arc and her voices. <laughs> her very own furtive little fly on the confessional wall. I only tried to help. Woman, if you was to milk a cow, it'd come out curdled. <laughs> But well, I'm not I'm not discussing the confessional secrets with the likes of you around. Come on. I spoke far too hastily, Father. I'm sorry. Not at all, not at all. Now, the fact is, I heard every wicked word you said in that confessional box. Now come on, tell me about it. Oh, right. Uh, well there's a firm near Westminster Abbey. Right? What's this? Um they've got a new battery operated neck microphone. It's light and you only need one for the whole mass. And the price of it? The whole system? A uh, hundred pounds. But the congregation will be able to hear your appeals to pay for it. Well, I think... <laughs> and the confessionals? Sixty pounds each. Soundproof and installed in a week. Sixty pounds. Mm. Not much, is it, Father, to safeguard the seal of confession? Well, we'd have to practice stringent economies to pay for it all. No more... Riotous living like the prodigal son on Nellie's strawberries. <laughs> that cream, Father. I keep this pamphlet and peruse it at my leisure. Now, don't forget you're seeing Mrs. Rollins this afternoon. A good woman. In fact, that's her only real fault. <laughs> now, seeing as it's your very first convert, I'll be on hand just this once. To give you my condolences. So, in confession, Catholics are obliged to tell the priest all their sins? Sins? Oh, yes, all their mortal sins. What are mortal sins? Well, like, um, murder, black marketeering, large-scale thefts. <laughs> I see. Catholics have to keep a strict count of things like that. Pardon? A strict count. Oh, yes. If a murderer or a crook confess their sins, are they forgiven? 
And if they die, they go to heaven. God is merciful. Maybe, but heaven doesn't sound very safe for children. <laughs> if I became a Catholic, would I have to confess all my sins to you? Yes, all your mortal sins, yes. Well, that is if you committed any, of course. <laughs> I'm very interested in confession. Good. You've been a priest long? Uh, oh, two or three months, yes. Uh, How old are you, then? <laughs> um, getting on 24. And you're not married? <laughs> well, no. Catholic priests aren't allowed to marry. What use are you in confession, then? <laughs> How can you tell married people they mustn't divorce, for instance, if you don't practice marrying? Father Ned, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were free, but uh, I see you're a prisoner. Oh, no, no, come in. Come in. <laughs> Father, come in. Uh, uh, Mrs. Rollings was just asking about divorce. It's just forbidden. I know, but why? Because there's a grievous sin, that's why. I see. Uh, Mrs. Rollins. I wouldn't be using that word, why, quite so often if I was you. Why? <laughs> I mean, no, Father. Why is a, a nasty little Protestant word. <laughs> <laughs> we Catholics say credo, I believe, to whatever the Pope says. If you want to ask why, then I think you should go along to the Anglican vicar and let... Uh, let him instruct you in unbelief. <laughs> He'll let you why, why, why to your heart's content. <laughs> but are you bound to keep secret what you hear in confession? If you were to come to me for confession, like, am I then permitted to tell your husband who's next for confession, whatever you've just told me? Or may I tell Father Neil here? I may not. Even though you've just confessed to me that you've squandered the whole of your housekeeping money. On a bowl of strawberries. Put it to the test. Pardon? Confess <laughs> your sins. Louder, Father Neil. You can't suddenly have become as saintly as all that. <laughs> oh, it is a soundproof. There's a coffin six feet below. <laughs> right, you can come out now, lad. It's all clear. Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you mending your ways, Father Neil. Sorry, Father? I said I'm glad to... What's the matter with you? I'm getting more and more deaf. It's all this oil and wax in my ears. I couldn't even hear my own confession. Well, it saved you scandalising yourself at any rate. <laughs> Go to Dr. Daly and have him syringe your ears. Uh, what about buying the new mic, Father? I beg your pardon? The new <laughs> mic, Father. Oh, you'll have to speak a lot louder than that. I'm, I'm, I'm very hard of hearing. The new mic... Oh, by the way, Father Neil, I've decided to purchase that new microphone. Pardon, Father? <laughs> Get yourself to the doctor and have your ears seen to. It's as ruinous talking to you as it is to Mrs. Pring. Well, now, that's the first year done. Enough wax in it to build three tall beehives in Connemara. <laughs> You won't hear anything yet, Father, which is why I'm going to make my confession to you. <laughs> Drink a potching, Father? Oh, no, of course not. Uh, well, do you mind if I do? The drought is upon me, you see. Uh, cheers, Father. <laughs> God, if it wasn't for the hard stuff, I'd be a nervous wreck. <laughs> the ears of my soul are deaf to the entreaties of the Almighty to give up the drink. Oh, sweet Jesus, it's impossible. <laughs> Oh. Will you hold still, Father? It's impossible to straighten the twist in an old stick, and that's the truth. Charles, <laughs> our revered parish priest, 
has sounded a fire alarm at me often enough and raised a ladder. But it's no good, you see. <laughs> now I'd probably end up with the flames licking round me and not as much as a friendly spark to light me fight with. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's not so bad, is it? Yeah. In a moment or two, bubbles will burst. I'm forever blowing bubbles. Crouchy bubbles in the air. Doctor! Has it happened? Have they popped? Here, try combing your hair. Uh, thank you. You know, for a day or two, Father Neil, before you adjust, your electric razor will scream at you like a pneumatic drill. <laughs> oh, uh, I have this on prescription, you see. <laughs> and you'll be able to hear the circulation of your blood as well as everyone else's in a three-mile radius. <laughs> and now, Father... <laughs> give me a blessing. <laughs> Now, before I waste any of my precious breath on you, are you still deaf or no? I hear you painfully well, Father. Where were you this afternoon, anyway? The men came to fix the new loudspeaker system in the church. I was at Dr. Daly's having the hard wax removed from my ears. Oh, well oiled, I hope. He was. Oh, I know he was. <laughs> I'm referring to the wax in your ears. There she is. Hmm? Working like a dream. Audible to the deaf and the dead alike. <laughs> Where's Mrs. Pring, by the way? She's at the back door having words with Mrs. Davis from Woolworths. Mm. Ooh, Mrs. Pring is giving her a piece of her mind. Which she can ill afford. <laughs> How do you know that? My ears. Mrs. Pring! <laughs> oh, it's the charge of the heavy brigade. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Now, Mrs. Pring, I've decided that this microphone is too valuable to leave in the sacristy. So, for the weekdays, I shall leave it on the mantel shelf. Right? You may go. Where to? Oh, do not tempt me, woman. <laughs> May the Lord, in his mercy, stretch forth his hand and strike you down for the deed. I am now more than ever determined to save up and send you to America. <laughs> now listen, listen, Mrs. Spring. I'm saying the two early masses in the morning, so I do not want Father Neil to oversleep. So when you get up, would you mind tapping on his door with your tongue? <laughs> Leave. I've just been to the eight o'clock mass. How did the new loudspeaker sound? Terrible. Terrible? For the first time in years, I heard every word of his sermon. <laughs> it's a good job that man doesn't practice what he preaches. I couldn't stand it. <laughs> I could hear his dominus fobby scums even through the roar of my razor. Heavens, is that the time? I should have joined Father D in the box five minutes ago. See you after mass, Mrs. P. Mm. To this? Oh, there's the devil's own word, my dear. You'll have to make it. He's still wearing the mic. The best thing for you to do in thinking is to overcharge a few customers next week. 
That way you'll make up for what you overcharged him this week. What do you do that for me? I promise, Father. Uh, I added three pounds to my housekeeping money for my husband's taking <laughs> Me, Mr. Conroy, I'll turn the loudspeaker off. I thought Thursday was Friday, Father. <laughs> well, I ate meat thinking it was Friday, so I don't know if that was a sin or not. If you intended to sin, you sinned. Good afternoon. It was only an ounce or two. And it was chicken. So? But chicken's not really meat, is it, Father? It is so. But, but chickens come from eggs. I'm no longer aware that chickens come from eggs, even though I do not know that chickens came from eggs. Now, come to the point. There doesn't appear to be a switch. Well, pull the wire out, Father. Chickens come from eggs, and you can eat eggs on Fridays. Pull, pull. If fish laid meatballs, you still couldn't eat meatballs on Fridays. <laughs> what a knife. Do you sell chicken in your shop? Yes. Then chicken is meat. Oh, but we sell eggs, too. The Pope has decreed infallibly that chicken is meat. Then bless me, Father, for I have seen. There was something else? I'm pondering. <laughs> I'm sorry to be so long, No wire showing. I get a chance. I sinned behind my husband's back again last week. <laughs> With the undertaker. I do not wish to know what your accomplice does for a living. What passed between you? Three legs a button, Father. That marketeer. I didn't mean to do it. Not mean to. Oh, you can do that. On the cemetery, Father, I didn't seem quite somehow. And to go that meat under the yew tree. The gravestone's looking on. There is something else. <laughs> it seemed all right at the time. See, I. What are you doing, Father Boyd? Now, what 